Today we are back, back at it again. I'm so excited to be back. I know I said that last video, but man, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. It's great. I've missed doing this. I've missed you guys. And we're back again today with another Kurzgesagt video. Today we're going to react to what if you detonate a nuclear bomb in the Marianas Trench? Science, not fantasy. So we're taking a scientific approach to this. I think prediction here, okay? I personally think if we were to detonate a nuclear bomb in the Marianas Trench, Marianas Trench, pretty much nothing would happen. I don't think there would be barely impact. I mean, yeah, there'd be an explosion underwater and a little bit more radiation, but okay. I really don't think there's going to be pretty much any of an impact. I could be totally off base here, but to me, the ocean's huge. It's ginormous. There's so much going on. It's going to disperse so quickly. I mean, yeah, I don't think anything's going to happen, but let's find out how wrong I am and get right into it. What would happen if we detonated humanity's most powerful nuclear weapon at the deepest point of the ocean? For sure, tsunamis hundreds of meters high would destroy coastal cities, earthquakes would level countries, new volcanoes would bring us nuclear winter. So I guess in my mind, and I could be way off here, but in my mind, it's sort of like, what's a good example? Um, okay, a firecracker. All right, let's pretend for a second that you have a waterproof firecracker who can be lit underwater. You take that firecracker and you put it on your skin, right? You hold it on your arm. By the way, don't do this at home, but say you did. Say you put the firecracker on your, on your arm and you lit it. Bam, oh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna do some damage. You're probably going to the hospital for that one. Probably getting some stitches, maybe something else. Maybe a, a trip to the ward to get yourself evaluated for why you're lighting fireworks off on yourself. Don't do it. But it's going to hurt. Now, go to the bathtub and sit in the bathtub and put that firecracker right next to you in the bathtub. Maybe not right next to you, but a little bit of a distance, right? Because once again, the oceans are huge. So for this analogy, you're just putting it uh, a few inches away from you in the bathtub and you light it and it goes off, you're probably not even gonna feel it because that shock is being absorbed by the water, by the downward and sideways pressure of that water. Afterwards, everything's getting, you know, the, the smoke and whatnot and the, the debris from the firecracker, it's getting mixed in and convoluted and spread out, dispersed amongst the bathtub. That's kind of how I see this. Yes, a nuclear bomb is huge, they are incredibly destructive. They have horrible radiation problems that go along with it. But the ocean's the bathtub in this scenario. And yes, it's going to let off radiation, but it's going to get dispersed. So I, I really don't think that we're going to be doing any of these types of things. Maybe even Earth could be ripped apart or thrown out of orbit. Well, almost. Currently, almost Earth's deepest known point is inside the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is a very deep valley right at the edge of two tectonic plates that looks like an upside down mountain. Yep. It reaches a depth of about 11 kilometers, almost three times deeper than the dark grave of the Titanic. Oh, wow. It's one of the last places on Earth for humans to explore. Pitch black and under a thousand atmospheres of pressure, it's a relatively pristine environment thanks to the absence of humans. That's one of the things about the Marianas Trench that's always amazed me it's harder to go down there to the very bottom of that than it is to go into space space has a lot of challenges a lot of difficulties everything's trying to kill us there's no atmosphere down here you have thousands of atmospheres how do you deal with that pressure how could you possibly deal with that pressure and we don't have a good answer to that today we can go pretty deep but we can't go this deep we can't go to the bottom of this. A great place for our nuclear test. We'll use the most powerful nuclear bomb humans have ever exploded, the RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, or Tsar Bomber. Ah, uh, yep, the Tsar Bomber. Its explosion was so massive that its shockwave traveled around the Earth three times and its mushroom cloud stretched 56 kilometers into the sky. That's crazy. 
Its shock wave was strong enough to destroy everything in a thousand square kilometers. Its fireball hot enough to burn the rubble. I'm actually really glad that they're specifying exactly what type of bomb they're going to detonate here because that makes a huge difference. So there's a lot of different types of nuclear bombs, a lot of different payloads, and a lot of them have differing variances of just destructive capacity. Some of them are meant to cause a very large explosion. Some of them cause smaller explosions, but are designed specifically to release more radiation, the dirty bombs. So, you know, there's a big difference there. So that does matter. So it sounds like from us using the SAR Bomba, that we are specifically looking for an extremely large explosion. That's the main concern. And that does make a huge difference. Bombs like this release such an enormous amount of energy at once that they could boil away an entire lake. And if we set off a nuclear bomb in the Mariana Trench, that's exactly what happens. Let's pull the trigger. See a few bubbles up on the surface. <laughs> In the first my few guess. microseconds, the nuclear fuel undergoes its chain reaction and explodes with the power of 50 megatons of TNT. A wow. blinding flash of light illuminates the darkness of the trench for the first time in history. The heat of the explosion produces a cavity, a flaming bubble of water vapor, radioactive nuclei, and the remains of very unlucky fish. <laughs> One other thing about this too, is as that explosion happens, it's a lot different than on the surface for a few different reasons. One, it's surrounded by water. Let's start with the very obvious one. But two, a side effect of being surrounded by water is it's under immense pressure. So on the surface, you get the mushroom cloud, you get the whole airflow dynamic causing that, and you get the shock wave. That's actually, generally speaking, the more destructive portion of the bomb is the shockwave. So under the water here in the different pressure and whatnot, you don't have that. You're not going to be sending out a huge shockwave. Uh, and this is my belief. I'm sure they're going to explain it here, whether I'm right or wrong, but I don't think you're going to get that shockwave because the water's absorbing it. Water's very good at absorbing that. Yes, it will create a cavity as it evaporates water away. But once again, the ocean is unfathomably big. There is an insane amount of water in this ocean, pressing down, pressing in from the sides. I just hit the microphone. Hopefully that wasn't too horrible. But the pressure is insane. And it's pushing back against that explosion. So that explosion is going to evaporate some water into gases. That's going to happen. That gas is going to end up escaping up at the end of the day. But that immense pressure will keep that bubble small and it will collapse that gap back in on itself. And it will be a violent crushing in, but in the grand scheme of things, it should be almost nothing. The bubble grows quickly as it vaporizes the water around it. The pressure of the bubble is immense, plowing outwards as if there's nothing in the way sending off a shockwave that will be felt by seismic stations and whales around the world. Yeah, and then, almost as fast as it emerges, it stops. Yep. On the surface of the Earth, Call that. this fireball bubble would grow to 10 kilometers the second after it's detonated, as the atmosphere barely puts up a fight to hold it back. Mm -hmm. But the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is enormous. With 11 kilometers of water overhead, being in the Mariana Trench is like being crushed by a hydraulic press from every direction. It's a chakra fruit from Naruto. <laughs> Here, a second oh. after the detonation, our bubble is about a kilometer across, when oddly enough, it starts to shrink. Wow, a kilometer. The bubble overextends itself, losing pressure as it expands until the water turns it back, recompressing it. I actually thought it would be smaller than a kilometer. So I'm pretty impressed that it would generate a kilometer gap. The tug of war between the fiery death bubble and water goes back and forth a few times, the bubble shrinking and growing until eventually the bubble loses for good. Mm -hmm. The pressure around it is too great and turbulent water begins to chop it up. 
it becomes something like the underwater equivalent of a mushroom cloud as it disintegrates into many smaller hot and radioactive bubbles drifting upwards. Mm -hmm. And as our mighty destructive blast rises to the surface, it does basically nothing. <laughs> Just a small wave and a bubbling plume of radioactive warm water in the Pacific. Yep. No tsunami will wash away Japan or California, although boats and whales in the area might have a bad time. Hmm. Yeah, it still wouldn't be a good thing. Like, we still shouldn't do this because it will be spreading radiation. Any Anything large enough with corpses that's going to die from this, like whales and whatnot, they're going to be highly radioactive. They're going to wash ashore somewhere, probably. They're going to be eaten by other things and spread around. You know, it's definitely not world-ending or catastrophe-inducing, but it's going to happen. There's going to be radiation unnecessarily released into the world. The radioactive fallout will be diluted into the Pacific after a few days, although a fair amount of radioactive water and salt makes it to the atmosphere where it collects and then rains down again. Even if the wind blows the fallout directly towards the Philippines, the worst of it probably happens over the oceans. Mm -hmm. But clearly, the real danger <laughs> comes from our exploitly happens over the oceans. <laughs> they got Godzilla coming out of the water. But clearly, the real danger comes from our explosion triggering earthquakes and volcanoes, right? No, I really don't think so. These tectonic plates are ginormous beyond our imagination. A nuclear bomb is not going to affect it in the slightest. Now, even if the nuclear bomb was, you know, a hundred times more powerful, I don't think that would be enough. These tectonic plates are the crust of the earth. I mean, it, I don't even know how to say that better. It's the crust of the earth. You're not moving that with explosives. It's just not happening. Even if we detonated the bomb right in the trench at the exact point where tectonic plates touch, probably not. Humanity and our destructive power is crazy, insane, and scary. Nature is way crazier, more insane, and infinitely more scary than humanity will ever be. We will never compete with nature. The explosion would vaporize a part of the sea floor and turn a lot of sand into glass, but most of the energy goes into the water, not seismic waves. Earthquakes are already quite common at tectonic plate boundaries. And earthquakes with as much seismic energy as our bomb happen a few times a year yep. without triggering any sort of apocalypse. But maybe it will affect the Earth's orbit. No. Since no mass is taken away or added to the Earth, our orbit is completely unaffected. Mm -hmm. Also, there have been well over a thousand nuclear tests in the last 70 years, and that didn't change our orbit, so why would this time be different? Yeah. That's a really good point. No mass was added or gained. There was no outside influence. Our orbit is not affected. And even if it was an outside influence, if that nuke came in from space, it's the same concept as it was with the tectonic plates. It is so insignificantly small compared to the Earth. I mean, that end of story. That's really all there is to say about that. Yes, it's crazy big. It's crazy scary. But... I mean, once again, nature reigns supreme. The strongest forces humanity can unleash are laughable compared to the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. The planet is too big. Is, it that, doesn't... is that shark tornadoes? <laughs> oh my God, I love these guys so much. I don't care. So what happens to us if we detonate a nuclear weapon really deep in the ocean? Pretty much nothing. I was right. Did you know that every bird in our videos has an owner? I want one. I was right. I was right for once. Wow, I feel good about myself. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. <laughs> I was honestly expecting to be proven wrong in some way because it just seemed too obvious to me. But no, that was a great video. I really liked that. I liked how, you know, they were straightforward to the point, explained why the reasoning was behind it. But I mean, yeah, to me, it just makes a lot of sense. We are nothing. Our destructive capability is nothing compared to the planet. We could annihilate ourselves tomorrow with every nuclear weapon we have in our arsenal. And you know what? The earth would move on. Yeah, things might slow down for a couple hundred or thousand years, but...
life will survive, the earth will survive, and probably be better off without us, to be completely honest. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I know I said it the last video, but man, am I happy to be back. It's really good. I missed you guys. I missed doing this. I missed these videos. I've been holding off on watching them. So anyway, thank you so much. Go check out my gaming channel if you haven't already. We do a lot of cool games over there. We're going to be doing even some more now that I have a computer that can handle it. And I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day.